All right, once you have identified the sketch approach that you want to use, and you can always use a program like Photoshop or PhotoP to improve your sketch before we turn it into a vector. So for instance, these were my sketches, but then I used uh, Photoshop, this was my first sketch, which was layered up a symmetrical design with the dynamic design. Oh, that's not it. So you can see my little sketch sheet here. And what I did is I simply took half of it, copied that onto a new layer, and then flipped that to make it perfectly symmetrical. And then I erased away from it to get my dynamic design, which is this. So you can see that drawing kind of embedded in there. But the one I think I'm going to go for is this one. And I liked my final one, but usually my last thumbnails are not the ones that I end up going for. But this is trying to combine positive and negative in a different way with a moon, a cloud, and and a bird as the elements. Let Illustrator open in the background there. And then the next thing I did in Photoshop is on a different layer, I just filled them in with black because you wanna always think of your, your logos as being cut out of black paper. It's not about outlines like we so often use for sketching. It's about solid black shapes. And those work even when very small you know, on a business card. And this one, not only do I think is the most visually interesting, the most unique, it also works best when scaled down the smallest and is recognizable. So that's the approach I'm gonna go with. So I make a really big screen grab of that, or I just use my Photoshop file. And then that's what I put onto the desktop here. That is what I start with when I open Illustrator, which is working, but kind of slow to open. We have not used Illustrator in the class before. So I have some tips for Illustrator in some of the slides that are linked. They're towards the end. Illustrator uses the pen tool a lot, so I'm going to keep this open. There are shortcuts for it, but also just understanding what each little uh, variation means to, to lead an anchor point and add an anchor point. To click, hold, and pull creates curves. To just click gives you straights. All of that. And I'm going to create a new file within Adobe Illustrator. Now, when we pick our size, this is not the same as resolution because these are vectors, not raster files. So I'm just gonna pick, I'll just do an A4 size, which is like an international standard for point size for layout. And that gives us not a canvas like in Photoshop or PhotoP, but it gives us what's called an artboard. It gives us the place on which we can see our design. Illustrator looks a lot like Photoshop or PhotoP. It has tools on the side. Some of those tools might look familiar, but they might work a little bit differently. And this is our artboard. I want to turn on rulers just like I do in Photoshop. So you can see that under View Rulers. And then the shortcut is the same as in Photoshop or PhotoP, it's Command-R to turn them on. But you'll notice the rulers are not in inches, they're in what's called point size. So when you choose font variations on a typeface, you can choose the, the point size. Is it eight point, is it 12 point, is it 14 point? That's what point sizes mean. They're a layout tool. You'll notice how just in its defaults, the workspace essentials 
how basic <laughs> Illustrator looks. So that's a little bit of the trick of it. There are a lot of tools. And so here are tutorials for anything you might have questions about. They'll show you how to create a Pac-Man or draw a bushy plant. These are things you can play with to, to build your skills. But we're just going to do black and white logo design for now. And so what we're going to do is take our sketch, drag and drop it in to Illustrator. Just like we've done so many times compositing with Photoshop. Place it, you can size it, you can rotate it, you can do whatever you need. This is just a reference sketch. Notice on the side you will see layers, just like in Photoshop, and we have just brought in our first layer. But unlike Photoshop, there's a drop-down arrow next to the layer, and that gives us the assets within the layer. So right now there is an asset, and that asset is not a vector, it's a raster file. When you bring a raster file, a pixel-based file, if I zoom in, you can see the pixels, into Illustrator, it's going to give you some options. So it looks like a, a transform box, right? What we're going to do is double click on it to get to the linked file. Double click on the linked file, and we're going to name it Sketch. And this is just our sketch reference. So this is not anything other than a guideline. The next thing I like to do is to dim it so that we can see our black shapes on top. We are going to do what's called onion skinning. And onion skinning is just taking its opacity down by 50%. But notice there's no opacity in the layers. So what we need to do is go up to Window and find Transparency as an option. Then I'm going to stick that in my little tool options here. And instead of 100%, I'm going to set it to 50. That's called onion skinning. Now I'm going to do something I do a lot in Illustrator, which is I'm going to create a new layer. Why is it not giving me control? <laughs> Let's see. Strange. Hmm. Anyway, I take it down to 50. Finally, I got to lose that. And now I'm going to save it. So file, save as. And I want to save it because we're opening Illustrator for the first time. I'm going to say don't show again and always save to my computer. Because if you save it to cloud documents, it's going to go to an account that's not your own. Because I'm logged in on a, you're logged in on a campus account. So when you save, of course, I'm going to do this flight logo. And instead of it going to Creative Cloud Files, very important that you navigate it to the desktop. Notice that this format, it's a new format. It's an AI format, which means an Adobe Illustrator format. OK, I'm teaching you some of the basics about vectors. Even though we haven't built any vector yet, that's the architecture for this. I can see it now on the desktop. So it looks, it's going to show up on a grid as an AI file. Now I want to save it as a different kind of file. Save as. And this is going to be an EPS file. EPS is the type of vector file that can move between raster programs and vector programs. I want you to know what an AI file is, but we're going to mostly work on our EPS. 
And I meant to save that to the desktop, but it doesn't look like it's saved there. Let me try again. It did save. Where is it? Try to find it in the finder. So I want to find that EPS file. This is where digital art is tricky because you don't have a physical product. You have to make sure you know where your files are. And my computer has been slow and glitchy. And it's really important because when Illustrator is not working the way you want it to, you often need to close it down and start it up again. Illustrator, the program. And so you want to be able to find, so there's my EPS. I don't see it on my desktop, but there it is on my desktop in my finder. So what I'm going to do is close Illustrator down and then open it up through this EPS file. Which stands for encapsulated postscript file. And it will have my sketch in there already. So I'm going to open this file with Illustrator. Hope for the best. Now, while that's opening, I can do the, the familiar thing in Photoshop like we did for exercise two when we first got it introduced to the idea of vector shapes and we did the um, custom emoji creation. Because Photoshop and Photopea, they have vector tools, but we do, they don't have the full um, ability of a vector program because you can't save things as EPS files. So this is in Photoshop. And to, to mimic what I was doing in Illustrator in Photoshop, I would just take the layer, I would take it down to a 50% opacity, onion skin it, right? And then, this is what I'm gonna be doing in Illustrator, I'm gonna build a new layer on top and I'm gonna start using vector tools to build in some of the big shapes, like so and then layering them up, duplicating them. Until I get a clean black shaped logo. Now, Photoshop and Photop also have a pen tool where you can draw your own vector shapes. But the big difference is you can't save them as vectors. And if we're not able to save as vectors, then it's kind of pointless. So I'm gonna close Photoshop, and now we're gonna do that kind of thing in Illustrator. But instead of being limited to just shapes that are already built into the program, I can draw my own and modify my own and cut out from existing shapes. Ooh. Sorry, computer's taking a while to cooperate. But onion skimming is the first step and then saving as an EPS is the next step. So now that it's an EPS, I'm going to lock the layer and I'm going to create a new layer on top of it. And this new layer is going to be where I create some vector shapes. So just like in the Photoshop, when we did the, the tools, I have those options. I could create circles and a lip.